We need to talk about Hell Divers 2 because holy crap, talk about an unexpected meteoric success. So this right here, ladies and gentlemen, for those who don't know, is a game that was announced all the way back in May 24th, 2023 during one of the PlayStation Showcase streams. This is made by a game development studio called Arrowhead, which is under the PlayStation banner. And this is basically, think of Starship Troopers, the video game where you go in and fulfill objectives during a mission in this sort of like sandbox map with a group of up to four players and you squash bugs and uh, try to fend off swarms as you complete objectives and it's just pure chaotic fun as highlighted in trailers like this. Uh, the game looks gorgeous, it plays really well, it's just a ton of fun. Now, when it was announced back then, you can see right here, the trailer had roughly half a million views, which is pretty respectable and suggested that this game would see a decent enough audience and player base. But then the launch trailer got even more traction. You can see right here, 827,000 views. This trailer was released last month, back in January 16th, 2024. But even then, that didn't indicate the level of success we'd see for Helldivers 2. Helldivers 1 was received really well, and there was like a niche audience for it and with hell divers 2 it was expected that it do better than hell divers 1 but you know it would just do kind of like pretty good but it wouldn't like blow up the way it did looking at how hell divers 2 is performing right now it's actually kind of crazy it started off really well on pc on steam with a launch that had roughly 300,000 players but you can see right here that that number has not only sustained but very quickly climbed constantly breaking new records eventually in the 400,000s and now look at this huge spike right here this is just today we're seeing an all-time peak of 439,974 players huge numbers that the developers did not expect i mean looking at the top all-time peak in current players of all time hell divers 2 is sitting at a respectable 20th place surpassing games like starfield and you know monster hunter world even grand theft auto 5 had less all-time peak concurrent players than hell divers 2 did sitting in 25th place with uh, 364,548 which again very respectable but to see hell divers 2 skyrocket to the level that it did at the rate that it did it, it's Pretty amazing stuff. Oh my God, did I just see the all-time peak players change to 457,000? Okay, so the number keeps climbing. And this is just PC, keep in mind. This game also obviously came out on PlayStation 5. There you can see that Helldivers 2 has now surpassed both Fortnite and Call of Duty, taking the number one spot on the top played games chart on PlayStation Wow. That tweet was published two days ago, February 18th. It is now two days later, February 20th, and still Helldivers 2 is at the top of PlayStation Store's charts. It is performing incredibly well. It's doing so well, in fact, that Arrowhead has had to reevaluate their live service plans for Helldivers 2 as a whole in a good way. They're expanding on it significantly, seeing how well the game is performing, how much money the game is making, and how much more they can support this game, which is why it's being reported that Helldivers 2 is recruiting more developers to accelerate and beef up its content plans. So we're just scratching the surface for Helldivers 2 and already the base game on its own is incredibly fun and has enough content, especially for $40, that it's very easy to imagine a very successful long-term life for this game. I, I can only imagine what this game could look like years from now. That's as long as they handle the live service aspect right and maintain this game well with compelling content additions that will keep people playing this game for years to come. For now, though, things are looking good, not just commercially, but also critically, you can see right here a favorable 83% or 83 out of 100 score from 52 critic reviews. The user rating is just about the same with an 8.4 from 825 users. And looking at the critic reviews, you can see that a lot of them sit in the 80s and 90s with very few falling below 80, very few being in the yellow with a 70. But there's not a single review that is outright completely negative about this game. And the vast majority fully put out there that while it's not a perfect game, it's just so much fun and so addictive that it's hardly surprising that this game has gained so much traction over the course of these past few days alone. I think one Twitter user summarized best why this game has garnered such popularity, stating, quote, the game launched at $40 with a lot of content. Developers have had such good communication with the community. It reminds you of the 360 PS3 era of pure co-op fun. The gameplay itself is so incredible. Good level up system too. And it's just one of those games where the most fun stuff is very emergent because the game has just all these 
these really cool systems that work in tandem and can cause a lot of chaos depending on the player's actions and how they engage with the game. And so you see tons of clips online of people posting some of the most insane and most fun and like hilarious gameplay footage and that spreads across social media and allows this game to gain further traction. The microtransactions feel so light, it doesn't damage the game. And I looked at the store and, you know, the microtransactions compared to many other games that I've seen are, you know, much more affordable and priced more reasonably. They're relatively cheap compared to other games that I've seen. And a lot of it's just basically cosmetic. And the co-op nature of this game means that even, you know, what slight advantages you might get in microtransactions only serves to aid the cooperative element of the game because you're ultimately working together. The main focus is PvE. They won't do PvP and get a toxic community. And it gives you a good adrenaline when finishing a mission so hard, not to say just one more game type of experience. As someone who's put in a couple matches into this game, I can confirm that it is an outrageous game, pure, chaotic, epic fun. And the most fun set pieces in this game are not scripted. They happen as you just play through the game and as the chaos unfolds. And uh, yeah, I, I can see why this game has attracted so much attention and why it's got its hooks in so many people, why it's so addictive and why it's hard to kind of put down. Not to mention its Starship Troopers vibe and the uh, sort of satirical humor that is imbued in the game, combined with the fact that it just plays really well and it just, it feels good to actually shoot the bugs and to be able to deploy all those like airstrikes that you attain as you upgrade your ship. Like the upgrade and progression system of this game is really satisfying because the the new stuff you get, the new weapons and equipment, the new sort of uh, stratagems, if you will, that you can call from your ship to deliver hell upon the infestation down in the ground. All that stuff really escalates and makes for really epic gameplay, especially if you coordinate with other players and, you know, you get like a good uh, arsenal of weapons and equipment and airstrikes that you can call down. And also you can like summon turrets and everything. And it's also very strategic. It, uh, yeah, it, this game has it all, really, when it comes to fun co-op action. And just looking at social media, you can see the kinds of clips that are spreading, like this individual here who protected a fellow player by jumping in and taking a bullet or a missile for him. And then right here, we have an individual who pulled out this crazy stunt where they pretty much ran circles around this infestation, this army that had him surrounded, and he's waiting for the extraction ship to come in. And he's somehow like surviving through all this and eventually managed to safely extract and, you know, do some crazy maneuvers to make this happen. Again, very emergent gameplay where the most epic stuff is not scripted. It's all based on just player actions and systems that come together to allow players to really get creative and insane. You got epic situations like these that highlight just how cool some of these like airstrikes can be. And how satisfying it can be to dispatch uh, outposts and uh, hordes of enemies with these. And then <laughs> right, you got comedic moments like this where uh, a missile uh, comes in at just the most opportune moment before it, um, <laughs> it blows the player up. Uh, there is friendly fire in this game as well. So that makes for some interesting and fun and hilarious situations as well. You've got this clip right here where you got a player flying in due to the ragdoll physics of this game. I mean, you see what I mean, right? Like, this is the kind of gameplay that is just endless fun because things can play out in such endlessly chaotic and hilarious and epic ways. And there's just so much cool stuff happening. So many cool clips out there on social media about this game that it's like it's almost hard to resist the temptation of checking out this game, seeing how... Like, stuff like this can happen consistently throughout your gameplay experience. You can see just how many Helldivers 2 clips are going viral and just making people laugh and giving them an amazing time. So right here we have one on Twitter. For you guys. I can't wait to go back home and see my mom. <laughs> so, just dumb, amazing stuff like this. Uh, just just makes this game what it is. There's even little things like how there's like a playable rock, paper, scissors mini game. Uh, that you can, you know, input your commands for selections and actually just straight up play rock, paper, scissors with a uh, fellow trooper, if you will. Whether it's the big stuff or the little stuff, Helldivers 2 just has fun at every corner. Now, this is also a game that is suffering from success. It almost became too successful 
unexpectedly so for the developers. So they were not ready for the server load that they would need to handle the influx of players, which is why if you go to Steam right now and look at the game's uh, review score from user reviews, it's sitting at a mixed score of 68% from over 100,000 reviews. Many agree that the game's incredibly fun qualities are there and that this is an awesome game all around. Many agree that this game does deserve a lot of praise, but looking at the negative reviews, a lot of people bought this game and just can't play it because they just aren't able to get past the queue, which is incredibly long, especially during busier times of days. And some people are also experiencing certain bugs and crashes and the like. So there's stuff like that that Arrowhead has to iron out. And I'm very confident that that will absolutely happen once they're given some time to increase the server capacity and are able to adapt to just how many players flooded into this game unexpectedly. Again, suffering from success. But that's something that can be handled, and it's understandable. Nobody expected this level of success for Helldivers 2. So I understand why the developers weren't prepared for this. But it's almost like a it's a problem, but it's a good problem to have because it indicates that in the long term, you know, people will stick to this game and are looking forward to playing this game and will continue playing this game at this level of interest. Uh, but yeah, right now, for example, the Helldivers 2 developers announced that they had to temporarily cap concurrent players to around 450,000 players to help with server stability. So they set a maximum number of players, and that's why queues have gotten longer. It's harder to get into the game. And this is temporary while they work out the server side of things while they expand the server capacity. But this is kind of the main issue that the game is facing right now. And then there's also the issue of the fact that Helldivers 2 didn't add an away from keyboard timer. So a lot of players, because they don't want to lose their place in the game, like, you know, exit the game and then have to wait in queue to get back in, a lot of players are just kind of staying online and not allowing others to have the opportunity to play the game because servers are full due to the fact that so many players are just kind of staying online and uh, keeping their consoles or uh, PCs on and keeping the game on. And so a lot of people are suggesting that they should add an AFK timer. It seems like an obvious addition, but once again, when you don't expect your servers to be at capacity, when you don't expect the level of success that you know your game garnered, it's understandable why this wasn't their top priority or why they couldn't predict this. But it is good to see that the developers are responding. Right here, we have the CEO of Arrowhead and Helldivers 2 creative director himself responding to somebody suggesting to add an AFK auto kick, saying that I agree with this. I have already mentioned this to the team. So so it's in the works and they're doing their best under circumstances that they did not expect. So successful and fun is this game that it's even raised conversations on the Xbox side of things. You've got people who are actually signing this petition right here to bring Helldivers 2 to Xbox. And I mean, it's actually garnered quite a significant number of signatures, over 56,000, and this number is rapidly growing. Though, once again, Arrowhead is a PlayStation studio, so it's very unlikely that the game will come to Xbox unless PlayStation just pulls out something that they've never done before and decide to be more flexible with this game due to its popularity to essentially allow the game to make even more money and to garner uh, an even bigger player base. Even Phil Spencer, uh, Xbox's uh, head of gaming, commented on this, saying that Helldivers 2 is a great game, but also says that he's not exactly sure who it helps in the industry by not having that game on Xbox, which is, you know, kind of hypocritical because Xbox has exclusivity as well. In fact, they bought Zenimax and Starfield, which was supposed to come to PlayStation 5, is no longer coming to PlayStation 5 because Microsoft and Xbox bought out Zenimax and Bethesda, and so PlayStation players will, were deprived of the Starfield experience. Now, he does say that I do get that this is the current climate. He says there's a legacy in console gaming that we're going to benefit by shipping games and not putting them on other places. We do the same thing. But generally, Microsoft has been in the stance of like, I hope there's one day of future where we can like break the barriers of exclusivity and have certain games on as many platforms as possible. Uh, if such a future even is possible, you know, who knows? But yeah, I mean, this is the kind of discussion that's happening around Helldivers 2 because it's become such a phenomena. And this is one of those games that, that feels like it was really made in good faith. It, it was made with the vision that the original developers intended. It really feels like, it, it doesn't feel like a corporate committee came together to be like, what is going to drive the most engagement? All they made was a game that best represents what they wanted to make, which was basically a Starship Troopers-ass video game. 
and then they decided to make it as fun as possible and implement everything that makes this game fun without you know shady monetization elements to impede elements that make it fun and just uh you know once people have fun with the game and spread that fun online with clips and whatnot and or share just talking about their experiences and highlighting all the chaotic fun that can happen and tempting others to join in that's when you get a viral success like this that you know maybe you didn't expect during its marketing campaign but uh spread far and wide once people realize what they actually had on hand after purchasing the game downloading it playing it and experiencing what is just pure unadulterated fun well done to everyone at arrowhead well done to hell divers too Frankly, 2024 is already off to a great start with a great slew of games, and Helldivers 2 adding on top of that is just fantastic to see. I'm really pleased to see that games like Helldivers 2, which don't feel cynical and are just so purely fun, can thrive at this level. And this is one of those games where it's like it's live service, I think, done right so far, at least, and hopefully it can maintain that role through what I hope will be a long-term lifespan. Or at the very least, that's one man's take. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on Helldivers 2. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.